rain was nourishing the ground and bringing new life, feeding existing life with water, with moisture, with nutrients in the air. So these are some of my notes when I watch the content from Dr. Yaquin. I decided to go and make some notes and keep up with some of these things because it's some very useful information. And so when he's talking about reversing autoimmune issues, what I saw from watching a couple of his um, breakdowns is that number one, you got to maintain your pH balance, not too acidic and not too alkaline. If you're too alkaline, you can end up with what's called alkalinidosis. And if you are too acidic, you can end up with acidosis. So what that means is that there are certain things that you can eat that you might think is alkaline, but it actually triggers an acidic reaction in your body, or it increases the level of alkalinity in your body to the point where you end up having issues. I mean, there's things that you can eat that are acidic like certain citric fruits that are that will trigger an alkaline reaction in your body. So they're actually alkaline foods, but they're acidic. So it's counterintuitive on, you know. So the thing of it is though, it's about balance. Alkaline water is not recommended, right? And you don't want things that's gonna push you too far in one direction or the other. It's moderation. And that's one of the biggest lessons I learned about that. And so you gotta have moderation when you're talking about alkaline foods and you're talking about the Dr. Sabi diet and other things like that. So, but it's best to avoid acidic foods more than alkaline foods because there seems to be an abundance of uh, acidic foods or acidic forming foods than there are alkaline forming foods. And bacteria like acid. Actually, there's many things in the human body, according to Dr. Yaki, that like acid. They, they like acid, they feed on acid. And so the presence of acids beyond a certain level, the presence of acids will trigger bacteria to grow, reproduce, in some cases, beyond a level that's healthy for your body. And this is not that acids themselves are a bad thing. It's that the bacteria are there to maintain balance. It goes back to balance. And so if you're having an increase in bacteria and other microorganisms like that, where it's becoming a problem, then acidity is a root cause. Not the root cause in all cases, but in many cases, it's a root cause. And you can get acid not just inside your organs, within your body, and in your fluids, but you can end up with acids in your tissues. You can have acids in your tissues, on your skin. I used to have an issue like that uh, about two, two and a half years ago. Uh, from the 2020 uh, situation, global situation, I had boils and bloody uh, scabs all over my hands. It's all been cured through the different dietary and fasting practices that I've shown in other videos. But it took me about three years to fully cure this, but cure it, I did. And I did it through intuition and research. And I had black spots in between my hands, in between my fingers. There is somebody that is very well known um, whose, whose content that I watch, they had the same issue. And their response was to get rid of their vegan diet. I didn't do that. What I did was I got rid of processed oils, processed sugars, and thick breads. And so, anyway, what I didn't know at the time was that the tissue was the largest organ in the body, 
and the way I was treating my skin was causing some issues. Anyway, so alkaline foods can trigger acids in the body and acidic foods can trigger alkalinity in the body. What I didn't know was that spring water is slightly acidic. Put the emphasis on slightly. So spring water is actually good. That's why spring water is alkaline because it's not alkaline outside of the body, but when you drink it and it goes inside the body, it triggers an alkaline result. So that's your body that's actually creating the alkalinity or the acidity. It's your body in the way it's responding to these external things that you're putting in. And you've got many grains that are more on the alkaline end of the scale. And so the thing is, is that I learned from Mantak Chia that in certain practices like Qigong and energy work, you want to try to control your consumption of grain. I didn't get the real breakdown from Mantak Chia on why you would do that, but his advice lined, lined up with the advice other people are giving given um, about watching your grains. And then later on, I got this scientific research that showed that there are some issues with too much grain, too much rice, too much bread, depending on your body chemistry and your body type. And so anyway, that's just a side note. But what I really want to go into is uh, the proteins, right? And so I watched a two and a half hour um, breakdown from Dr. Yaki on proteins and I watched it six times so you can imagine that I got almost 12 14 hours invested in the information that he broke down and I made copious notes so here's but I wanted to notate what he said in two two and a half hours in a simpler way in a what I would call a logical way very very linear uh, breakdown so proteins and amino acid structures are not the same thing, right? So proteins is a form of amino, can be formed of amino acids, right? So what we're really talking about is the difference between plant protein and animal protein. So I came up with some abbreviations because I uh, am a software engineer, software architect, systems engineer, I'm into computer science and all this stuff for over 25 years, and we like to use uh, formulaic notations in order to break certain complex things down. So these are the abbreviations I'm going to use in this discussion. Uh, AAS, amino acid structures, PT, protein in general, PT, lowercase a, protein from animals, PTP, protein from plants, PTZ, proteins from seeds, nuts, and various liquids, as well as legumes. And so, amino acid structures, they build tissues, muscles, and bones. That's a very important thing. I made a ill-informed video last year where I dismissed the, notate, the notion of protein. But I've learned a lot since then. And what I learned is that protein and muscle building is vital for your life and for quality of life. Cells are made out of amino acid structures and amino acid groups. And the signaling activity among cells is what constitutes life. The signaling activity, the electrical energetic movement of signals between cells, the communication between cells by way of signaling is what creates life, is what is life. So animals eat other animals and or plants and or fruits, converting the amino acid structures in a, a group, right? In a, a, in a, a closed group of PTA, PTP, PTF, PTZ. And it's converted into protein as a byproduct, right? Humans that eat animal meat are ingesting 
an already converted and processed amino acid structure and amino acid groups that were designed for a different mammal other than a human being, right? So to give more clarity on that, what that is is that when a lion takes down a gazelle, the amino acid structures that make up the gazelle are compatible with the digestive functions in that lion. But those amino acid structures in that gazelle is not necessarily compatible with the digestive systems and functions within some human bodies. Some human bodies actually can ingest the already converted amino acid structures in a gazelle. But some human bodies do not benefit long term from that. Now, the human body is very intelligent and very capable, and it can compensate for things, but only for so long before it says, oh, what the whatever. Um, I'm just going to, you know, break down and just start having issues. OK, now this is what I this is how I look at it. This is how my mind looks at this and how I look at a lot of things. That protein that we're talking about, that um, uh, PT. A, it's of a geometrical, that's my emphasis on most of my theories about everything. It's, it really comes down to geometry. That protein is of a geometrical and biological configuration. These are actually synonymous, but it's of a geometrical configuration, optimally designed for the animal, but not for most humans. It comes down to the geometry. That relates to the discussion about sugar, right? Why does processed sugar work so bad in the body, but natural sugars and fruits work so well? It's the geometry. It's the geometry. And a square pig fitting into a round hole can be an awkward um, combination and so the combinations need to link up the right way so that you have the right flow and the right transformations. That's why your body can consume processed sugar, but it deals with sugars bound inside fruits, whole fruits, much better because that geometrical configuration is in a much better structure for the body. Anyway, so many proteins are higher on the acidic end of the pH scale. It tends to be higher in nitrates. So you got a nitrate issue. And keep in mind, nitric oxide is great for uh, blood flow. It's great for heart health. And it's great for men when we're talking about testosterone and we're talking about other factors that uh, link uh, uh, are linked to the health of a man when it comes to intimate relationships. Okay? So nitric oxide, right, is in, in uh, what's that other thing called? Uh, nicotinic acids are good for men in men's body, right? Um, but you can have too much of these things and you can have too much of a negative impact on the pH scale when we're talking about these acids. And then you have then the attraction of bacteria and other factors that... Uh, impede on health. So then, um, and then you have nitrogen when it's at a certain level is not very good for the kidneys. Let's also note that beans are the seeds of plants and contain higher concentrations, concentrations of PTP. That's uh, plant-based protein and nitrates on average. And we can actually manage beans through soaking through sprouting and through other practices that actually maintain the health profile of beans, but also reduces their negative effects. Now, high rates of cardiac issues and kidney issues does exist among bodybuilders. Don't read that to say all bodybuilders, but there are many bodybuilders that end up with cardiac and kidney issues due to an excess of PTA, 
protein from animals. Also, PTA in the wrong concentrations can increase blood coagulation. We need the blood to flow. We don't need it to coagulate. So, certain physical body types, though, can tolerate higher rates of PTA. So, this breakdown that I'm sharing here is not for everybody. It is not for everybody. But those who know, they know. There are people who know for sure they are um, good with meat, animal protein. And then there are those that want to turn the uh, turn their head the other way and stick with the animal protein because of the taste. Well, this is the information. You can take it or leave it. But anyway, um, so we got... Uh, protein from plants, proteins from fruits, and proteins from nuts, seeds, and legumes, right, which are beneficial to a, a vast majority of humans. Now, most humans lack the physiological features to naturally convert animal protein uh, to food, convert an animal to food, right? So, basically, frying pans don't exist in nature. And the creatures that, that best take advantage of animal protein are those animals that can take down another animal in, in real time, uh, suck their blood, right? I mean, that's a real thing. And eat their flesh. If you watch Nat National Geographic or the Discovery Channel or something like that or you know, I don't even know if YouTube allows you to see uh, images of animal takedown. I, I don't know. And I decided not to look for that because, you know, YouTube can be very funny about even mentioning certain things. So I'm mentioning the term takedown and I'm leaving it for others to know what that is. But human beings do not have the equipment built into their bodies well, let me say most human beings don't have equipment built into their bodies to take down other animals with their bare hands and with their bare teeth and to even consume that animal right then and there. That is the only scenario where you get the maximum benefit out of animal protein. All other scenarios for the majority of humans does not result in proper nutrition and nutrients from animals. Okay? So humans really are naturally equipped to acquire and eat fruit and vegetables. So plants have natural defenses that indicate they are not the optimal natural food source for humans, but they are more optimal than animals. But the plan of nature appears to be the generation of fruit so that humans and other creatures consume that fruit and then through elimination, through digestion and elimination, the seeds that were consumed in the process of consuming that fruit are then moved back into the ground to produce new vegetables. So fruit is actually nature's way of having vegetables work in, hand, in tandem with humans to perpetuate the growth of vegetables. So it's a win-win for the vegetables and for the humans. But we can benefit from some vegetables, and so we do need to eat vegetables because they have some beneficial properties in cases where fruits are not always available. So again, certain body types and that's the emphasis here, certain body types. Those body types that have a higher incidence of, what is that, what's that called, stomach acid? What's the technical name? Beta, uh, betaine uh, caloric acid, I think. And then um, higher rates of ammonia in the blood and ammonia production that also it's synonymous with um, higher tolerance for colder temperatures those with those features in their biology tend to also be those that work well with animal protein and animal meat. But 
if you're not the type of person that can really uh, hang outside in 50, 40, and 30 degree weather in shorts and a tank top and do it so comfortably and naturally like you don't even notice it, but you just think that being out in the cold feels so good, right? And um, you can digest meat like it's nothing. Then, yeah, uh, none of this information is actually for you. So anyway, um, but nearly all body types can readily and optimally convert uh, fruit proteins to human optimal amino acid structures. Animals cultivate the ecosystem and are not meant for food. Heart attack is the clogging and blocking of an arterial wall. Capillaries and veins get clogged, blocking the flow of blood and the delivery of oxygen and nutrients, as well as um, producing the proper pressure uh, between the heart and the other areas of the system. And know that not all cholesterol is bad. Cholesterol is actually a building block of the body, but it's the increase of cholesterol in a certain geometrical configuration as well as a fluidic structure that can be an issue, right? And that's where we end up with inflammation. And then you got calcium, which it turns out calcium is actually attracted to acids. And so you end up with these buildup of these different constituents that is basically the body malfunctioning because you have the wrong elements being introduced into it, namely animal protein. And so mucus is not a bad thing. If you got a runny nose, if you got all this stuff coming out, that is actually a good sign that your body is trying to work to rebalance itself. So you shouldn't be trying to dry up your mucus by taking uh, this pill or that kind of thing, right? And that's not medical advice. You've seen the disclaimer at the beginning of this video, but there is an alternative view that you just don't need to have, um, you don't need to fight against your mucus. You need to let your mucus work for you to help cleanse out the body. And sometimes it takes more than a day to clean out something. It could take a couple of days. It could take a month of mucus flows to get so much of what has gone wrong out of the body. So that's that's the story on mucus. So, yeah, toilet. I'm sorry. Uh, facial tissue is a good thing. Facial tissue is a good thing. Because, you know, there's a social aspect to having too much mucus coming out your nose. But at the same time, you don't need to say, uh, oh, I need to get rid of that mucus altogether because it's just so annoying. No, that mucus is trying to save you. It's trying to save you inside your body. It may not be pleasing a sight outside your body in terms of how we look in terms of the rest of society. But inside the body, um, it's a it's a good thing. And so that's why I changed my whole perspective on mucus. And when my nose run and that sort of thing, I don't care what other people think. I know that my system is working to try to address something that I overlooked. Um, maybe I ate too much of something. Maybe I ingested too much of uh, certain nutrients, whatever the case may be. I might have encountered some, um, some vape. <laughs> you know, I don't vape and I don't do any of that, but sometimes I encounter that stuff. Maybe um, there was car exhaust that I... Um, ingested too much of, right? And I didn't notice it in time. And my body needs to clear that out. So anyway, so protein from animals can elevate acids to a level that draws away biological resources within the body to address acid accumulation, right? So basically what you're doing is that when you're eating animal protein, your body has to do so much work to try to compensate that animal protein and all the acids that are formed from it and through it that the other parts of the body gets neglected it can get neglected so you end up with an increase in cellular weakness and an increase in senescence that is aging that is a deterioration without um a a uh, a substantive response from the body to undergo cellular division in the right areas, to undergo renewal, to undergo repair and replacement of things that break down. So it's like if you can save the body that pressure, then you're going to be all the better for it. And then you got... Um, this, this was the main point for me, 
because this goes back to that ge geometrical uh, concept that I, I use for uh, uh, just about everything. Animal protein is in a complex amino acid structure that is far less easily approached by the human body than simple amino acid structures from things like fruit and plants and nuts, seeds, and beans. You see, the body, it turns out, it actually likes simple things. It doesn't really like complicated things. It's not efficient to deal with complexity like that. OK, the body, when it comes to specific areas, it likes simplicity. It does not like complexity. Complexity is more work. Complexity is error prone. Complexity is more chances for things to fall apart and not work the way they're supposed to. And complexity increases time. For all my software engineers out there, complexity analysis, big O notation, fruits, vegetables, and seeds and nuts, that is um, O N time, right? Where when you're dealing with um, animal protein, that's a logarithmic operations, right? That's a logarithmic operation that's going to take more time and then when you see Dr. Yaki really break this down, you see that how you get into the migration of meat between these different subsystems in the body where this breakdown actually happens, right? So eating meat that ate the things that you can eat yourself is far less efficient. Now, okay. Now that I'm, I'm looking at this for, let's say, the fifth or sixth time, eighth or tenth time, I will say this, though. This statement is true, but in theory, in theory, um, eating meat actually looks like it's more true than this statement because there is at least 25 nutrients bound up in red meat from what I understand from other experts. There's 25 nutrients that has been identified through science and research and the inspection of the chemical properties and element properties of meat. So it's like you could eat a chunk of meat and that would take the place of eating a variety of vegetables, fruits, meats, nuts, seeds, and beans. One food, one, one single food item that seems efficient, right? But it turns out to be wrong because it's it looks like what you what you have is you start out with this this massive code, this massive code that oh it's just one big massive code, monolithic code that can get all this stuff done, and then it takes forever to work it out. It causes more problems. Whereas if you take the concept of vegetables, fruits, seeds, nuts, and legumes, those are what you call atomic functions. They're smaller functions that are easier to optimize than one big monolith monolithic module. I mean, if they use a software development uh, metaphor, meat is your big monolithic module. It looks like a good thing at first but you can't really optimize it. And then you got your, your fruits and your, um, your vegetables and your nuts and seeds and legumes. There are a variety of them, but they are easier to optimize. They're easier to optimize. And so anyway, so when you eat meat that ate the things that you can eat yourself, right, it's less efficient because you're not actually getting more out of that meat. And at the same time, you are putting more work on your body. And it's trying to convert something that's already been converted. So it's look, your body's looking at this and it's like, okay, there's something there that looks like protein and I can work with it to some extent. And it's not, and the body's not going to judge, you know, 
Well, it is, but it's not going to judge in the, in the sense that, okay, I'm just going to reject this, right? It's just going to be like, okay, I'm going to do what I can with it. But what it can do with it is not as much as what it can do with, um, you know, fruit, vegetable, and other types of uh, proteins. So you end up with pepsin and lipid, phosphate lipids, um, through this process of conversion. And when it combines with uh, cholesterol, then you end up with factors that block glucose. So now you're, um, you are contributing to insulin resistance. And so, and again, this is not for everybody, but for some people, this is a causal factor for where they can see the potential for diabetes. And then you end up with high homocysteine and I actually understood what a uh, high homocysteine was, but I already forgot what that is. But anyway, so, but um, animal uh, protein amino acid structures are so complex that it can threaten the pH levels of the blood. Your blood has to be at a specific pH level. I think it's 7.3 that it has to be, if I remember correctly. And if it's, uh, if it goes uh, uh, two points too far or something like that, in the direction of alkalinity or uh, or uh, acidity, then it's not it's not good, and so your blood is always trying to maintain that balance. So you got a safety measure built into your body to try to keep all of this in check. Uh, excess animal protein, though, when it's transferred to the interstitial fluid, it can disrupt the lymphatic system, right? And I was going to uh, explain the lymphatic system. I understand that quite well, but I've explained that before and those explanations can go long. I'm going to give you um, the 60 second version of that, of this explanation. So it doesn't go so long. You have a lymphatic system. It's a system of um, nodes in your body, your armpits, your groin area, uh, every uh, underneath your feet, everywhere your body really does sweat right? That's where your, that's where your lymphatic system exits out of, right? And so it is your clean, it's your um, garbage disposal system in the body to try to get waste out of the body by way of uh, your pores and the like, right? But if you clog that up, you end up with garbage backup. Okay. So that's the, the short version of the lymphatic system. So as a safety measure, the excess animal uh, protein uh, in the amino acid structure is directed into tissues. That elevates uh, acid levels in the tissues of bones. Calcium then gets attracted to that acid, which causes, it can produce gout in some people. And if that conversion is not sufficient enough to get rid of that excess, then more of it is pushed to a final safety measure where you get a conversion to collagen. The problem with the collagen is that it binds to the arterial walls, which ends up saturating the basal membranes of the arterial walls. Basically, the short version of that is your um, actual arteries, they get too thick on the inside of the art artery, right? Which causes the blood pressure to increase because it's trying to push more blood through, right? And it's trying to push it through a, a narrower valve and that causes issues. And your, your body's natural balance for how your body's designed to move blood gets disrupted. So, and then you, and because blood is a mover of a carrier of nutrients, right, as well as oxygen, then you're actually uh, jeopardizing the movement of those nutrients and oxygen. So then over time, your risk of stroke and heart attack increases in proportion to the body's response to complex uh, amino acid structures from animal protein. Long term, um, the compensation bears a cost in arterial obstruction, cellular geometry function. That price has to be paid somewhere eventually, eventually. So if you are in your uh, teens, 20s, and early 30s, mid-30s, whatever, then your body is still on that side of the spectrum where it is so young that it, it, can, it can compensate in most cases. But as you get past a certain age, chronological age point, uh, those compensating functions begin to lose their effectiveness unless you sharpen them. I mean, there's a way to cheat the system. Um, I've seen some experts, they recommend, uh, let me see if I can get this right, Bet betine chloric acid pills 
you could cheat the system if like you're much older and you're not processing animal protein. You can like push your body to be able to do it the same way you did it when you're like in your 20s and 30s. But like I say, most people are not doing those those things. Most people are not going to do those things. And so the compensation compensating functions, they start to get dull and you end up with issues long term. Now, National Institutes of Health, um, I like their website. They got a lot of good studies. Um, Yaki, Dr. Yaki was talking about PMC 2653540. I looked up that article myself, talked about cured meat, vegetables, and bean foods in relation to childhood leukemia risk, a population study. Um, I've actually learned a lot more since then because I went into um, some, re some, of these re some of these research articles myself. And I have that linked in the description or the comment section of the video that precedes this. So you'd have to look at that. But anyway, the human body has enzymes to break down all kinds of things, right? Um, and hydrochloric acid um, will break down meat, but not 100%. Not 100 There's always something left over when we're talking about meat. Right, and so some of this uh, byproduct gets channeled into the bloodstream and ends up fattening the art arteries. We already talked about that. Uh, the pancreas um, has to send out signals for the production of hydrochloric acid, which stresses the areas around the stomach. Animal protein is complex, and you end up with putrefaction, and it's harder for the body. This is according to Dr. Yaki, right? Whereas uh, plant and fruit is simple. You got fermentation and it's easier on the body. And according to him and others, human body is sugar based, not protein based. And there was another NIH um, uh, document about um, metabolism of uh, and sign significance of homocysteine and nutrients for health. Uh, homocysteine is a common amino acid in the blood. You get it primarily from uh, animal protein and then high levels of it are associated with early onset of heart disease which is uh, at the root of heart attack strokes and osteoporosis and then um, animal uh, protein damages nephrons and it can complicate the operation of kidneys to those who've lost the compensating functions that maintain the balance between the breakdown of animal protein and the introduction of those amino acid structure groups and their subsequent byproducts to areas like the kidneys. So headaches, migraines, blood flow to the brain, uh, sometimes a, a, those are symptoms of arterial blockage, but those are not the only uh, contributors to headaches and migraines. Uh, heart rhythm, blood flow, uh, bone, bones having issues, nutrient blocking. Um, grain, gluten, and meat, you remove those things or you re reduce them. Or at least in the, f let's, uh, in the defense of grains, if it's the right type of grains or the right preparation of grains, then you can be better off. But some of the grains that are part of the either the American diet or in a, in a restaurants, American-styled restaurants, or uh, let's just say uh, Western-style restaurants, because uh, I also lump in Italian food with that, um, can be um, not good for the body. Anyway, the right foods keep the right balance. Commercial advertising induces addiction to certain foods that are not good for us, and that is a major part of the issue. And if you don't do elimination of some of this stuff in the right in the right time frame, then some of it does seep into the body. Another NIH study on meat consumption and cancer risk. But uh, you can have the best grass-fed meat, organic meat, uh, calmly killed, blah, blah, blah. An actual carnivore would benefit. I actually talked about this earlier, right? So I won't recover this anymore. But uh, let's see. But, and I also talked about this in a previous video. So I won't go over this uh, either. But that's the basic breakdown of my research into... Um, animal protein involving Dr. Yaki, and then in my video that uh, comes before this one, the, the one that I uh, published uh, a few days ago, uh, that one actually uh, presents um, a much uh, broader 
a set of views on this from Dr. Furman, as well as uh, Dr. Eric Berg, Dr. Jay Wartman, and Dr. Uh, Jia uh, Lia Yu. Uh, she is uh, an infectious disease um, uh, expert. And so, um, so I have a variety of voices and research um, that I discuss in that previous video, but this is one, this was the original video that I was going to do. Um, and I might um, do another one that um, puts all of this into like a PowerPoint or something, but I kind of just wanted to cover all of this while I wait for the rain outside to subside, which it has. So thank you for uh, going through this with me. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments.